So, we are not doing a real unboxing, but we will be doing an unboxing. But we're actually going to be focusing more on how to modify this case that we just purchased. So today we have the Inwin A1 IPX case. And right off the bat, I'll just say my main intention for this case is to modify it and modify it in a way that I get the best cooling possible in the least amount of space possible. So that will likely include water cooling. All right. So right away, we can do a comparison of my current small form factor case, which is the Geek A50, and there's a little size comparison of the two. You can definitely tell that the Geek A50 is much smaller than the Inwin A1. Uh, now it actually, it actually is possible to do some water cooling in this. Um, if you're able to modify the side panels like I have, you can actually situate radiators in a way that will allow water cooling inside it, but we're not going to take that adventure today. And so we're going to focus on this guy. Um, right away I'm looking at it and more than likely I'm going to see about getting rid of this tempered glass screen because it's not going to really help us with water cooling. Though it is pretty cool. Alright. Actually, right from the get-go, let's just go ahead and remove this bottom portion. So I, I did see some unboxing and some slight teardowns for this case before. Uh, and almost immediately I did realize that I'm going to probably not use this acrylic or polycarbonate part. It is, I'm not quite sure, it is PS. Oh, PS, this is not polycarbonate though. But I just don't like the look of it. Let's put this over here. Okay. This little fancy guy is probably going to go to. Now, more than likely, if you see this uh, power input here, I'm probably going to relocate it. Luckily it's just a bent tab. Put that around there. Might as well remove this side panel or add it already. And actually, what would be nice is if I could get another one of these panels that are not tempered glass so that I could then dremel in some holes to accommodate a 240 or even a 120 millimeter radiator. And just a heads up, I'm likely not going to be using the built-in wireless charger for the power supply. I do have my own uh, SF750 
power supply that's going to be way better than what's going to be in there. Um, from the reviews I read, it's just the run-of-the-mill ATX bronze 650 watt power supply. Uh, it's likely not going to hold a candle to this uh, platinum rated 750 watt. So this is the RGB strip and this could be reused. We'll see. I might go for a no RGB theme. Just leave them in there. They might be providing some rigidity to the case. So we can leave them in there for now. So let's take this motherboard out and then the power supply. power connector that I have yet to remove. We'll get to that later. Ooh. What I actually did not think about is how this top tempered glass panel comes off. I'm hoping it's not glued on. It's a little neater. I'm not doing that right now. And it is a really big power supply inside here. Holy schmooly. I also haven't seen a full size ATX power supply in a long time. hooked up to the wireless charger and it looks like it's just a, a USB micro USB port. I just moved it there and that micro USB port uh, plug is actually directly connected to this power supply and from what I've read it is when you plug this guy in it's, off, it's continuously on. But people say that you can't reuse it if you don't use your power supply, but it just means that you can't charge your phone while the computer is off, but you could also do some finagling to make that happen too. But in the meantime, let's get this big power supply out of here. The size of this case reminds me of the Q uh, Kruger QBX that I used to have. That thing is huge. For other comparisons sake, uh, this was a 10 millimeter extrusion uh, custom frame that I made with 3D printed parts. And I used to house my uh, ITX Biostar. X37T GTN 
and a GTX 1070 inside this thing that was actually water cooled with a Swift Tech kit. But that kit is now dead. Looks like they have a small metallic tab that's providing some support to the back of this power supply that I did not see. I've never seen that happen before. But we are now free. Nothing is huge in this power supply is so light. Like, I think this guy actually might weigh more, so maybe bigger heat sinks or bigger components. But Roughly the same. Yeah, this looks like trash though. Alright. So now we've got the power supply out. Actually, a lot of stamping work happened, or how is that thing right here? But let me see what the dimensions of a 240 millimeter radiator is. I'm actually concerned if this isn't long enough for it, because for sure a, the width would work but the length might be the issue. Well, I mean, if a 240 is around here, then maybe it's not an issue. There's a 360 millimeter radiator that I used uh, in a previous build that I'm just kind of using for size reference right now. TX240, that's uh, one of the ultra thins, and should be able to get the dimensions on here. So it has, says it has a maximum length of 278 millimeters. So 278 millimeters is around here. Oh, that'll more than fit. Um, so this zero here, 278, is roughly around here. So that's more than enough space to actually put in a uh, 240 millimeter radiator on the side. And I'm actually wondering if it's possible to put one on top as well, but let's find out. Let's put this guy over here. getting this tempered glass top off. I wonder how they do it. I might have to bust out the hair dryer for this one. Because I do not see any screw hole. Holes. Oh, did they really tape this guy on? That's going to be really hard. It's going to take some heat, most likely, to try to pry it off. I'm going to have to smash in this thing.
Give me some. Oh, I hear the adhesive coming off. So there's definitely adhesive in there. Now, you could be smart and be patient and use a hair dryer. It's going to be white, green, black. Just making sure that I remember where these cables are going to go after I remove them. So they're not soldered in, they are just clipped in and are easily removable. And they should work just fine. I have in the past used a system like that and it did cause some inter intermittent issues with the connection, but I think it should be okay. Let's put this right here. This tab here can likely just be oh, I've got some sticky stuff here. Just to cover the hole that they made when they made this tab. But essentially, I'll probably just bend this tab back since we won't be using it. It might fight me a little since they put these little indents in there to give it some rigidity. Some force will take care of that. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a hair dryer. I'll be right back. All right. So back here with a hair dryer in the hopes of uh, loosening the adhesive that they've used to attach the top tempered glass unit that also has the wireless charger on it. Okay. I've also brought out my power supply box that houses the adapter that turns a, a SFX power supply and makes it compatible with a ATX power supply now. glass away on this side and I think it's probably a good idea to just continue doing it from that side. All right, we're gonna get a little loud here. Got it off, and the tempered glass is not destroyed. So I think that's a win. That's very hot now. 
but you can see here that the wireless charging unit is just si simply affixed to the glass itself. Yeah, actually, I can, I can take it off. Why well, I can, yeah. So actually what's neat is that you can then use this tempered glass as a template to bring back the, the wooden uh, panel that they were showcasing at CES when this first released. Um, and then just simply stick this guy back on. I mean, even the adhesive is still actually intact on this and you can see the coils for the wireless charging unit. Neat. So I'll put this guy away. And now we can get a better look of what else we could do to the case. All right, so ooh, it's kind of hard to tell which side it's up now. All right, so we have lots of real estate on the top panel. And we know that a 240 millimeter radiator is around 278 uh, millimeters long. And it's definitely more than enough. I mean, this ruler is uh, around 35, or sorry, 300, 305 uh, millimeters long, and it is well within the case itself. Now, it may be that uh, we'll have to take these rivets out to remove the power supply, uh, I guess you can call it a cradle because um, we don't necessarily need all of this portion here because we're not using ATX, we'll be using um, an ITX uh, SFX power supply. So, we can have to do some test fitting just to see uh, where our no-go zones are in terms of the dimensions of the case. Because my hope is that I should have enough space to actually um, have a radiator in the side, a radiator up top, and possibly even a radiator in the bottom. So a total of three 240 millimeter radiators so that uh, we can adequately cool any components that we want to put in here. Uh, the components I will be running when this is all done is uh, an AMD 2700X and a GTX 1080 Ti, which is right here uh, in its stock cooler form, but I also have a Swiftec Komodo full coverage block for it right here. And this is obviously the, <laughs> the 2700X with the uh, Biosar X370 GTN already installed and I have a uh, EK Supremacy Evo water block for it and yeah so I, more than likely it's going to be using the uh, uh, the TX240 radiators because they are thinner and it's going to allow me to actually utilize this space more efficiently. Yeah, so let me get this uh, power supply mount installed so that we can then see how much space we have to play with, that we get to play with once everything is inside. But so far it's looking really roomy in there. I mean, the case is pretty large. Um, can, when you, especially when you compare it to a lot of newer cases out there in the market like the Dan A4 or the N-Case M1 or something. And even compared to the, the Geek A50, which I don't know if I would recommend that case. All right, so adapter's on. And let me get this inside the case so you can see how it fits in there. Okay, just trying to find out where the threads are on this. Okay, good. I'll just grab two of these bolts. That should be enough to hold it up for now.
Maybe. And then I'll hook up here. I'm not quite sure why. Am I experiencing some difficulty getting this? don't line up perfectly, I see. For a moment there I was afraid that they used custom mounts for the power supply that they used. But, all is well. Just stamped metal, so no big deal. I think the most dangerous part about this build is over with, which was that top tempered glass panel. I was really kind of scared to tackle that one, but it's out of the way and got it situated, and I just lost the screw. The tip of this screwdriver is magnetic, and so when it hits the edges of the case, the screw comes off because it loses its magnetism. got our power supply now in there. And let's see how it looks with the motherboard also installed in there. The CPU. I'll throw this guy. The IO cover. When the new X570 chipset comes out, I'll likely uh, upgrade to that along with the third series of the AMD processors coming out alongside with it. Uh, there's a lot of space in here. Cables, some feet, little tiny screws. Hmm. Well, probably completely ruined the warranty on this one already, so there's no point in keeping any of this. CI slot covers out of here. Now it looks like they only gave me um, these 632 screws, so I'm wondering if that's the same screw that the motherboard itself uses. Usually I'm so I'm used to those metric screws with a finer thread. So let's see what the situation is like here. Oh boy. It looks like accessing 
three out of four screws on this motherboard is gonna be fairly easy, but there is a third one there. That's gonna take some effort to get to, and it, it does seem like the screws designed for this are these six by 32 screws. And based on where my screwdriver is landing, I'm not gonna be able to get that fourth screw hole so easily. I do have a longer screwdriver that's in. Um, I'll give that a try in a little bit. Let me just get this third screw in here. So that we can at least get three points of security on the motherboard. So far, that's how it looks like inside there. Give me a second while I grab my longer screwdriver. All right, got the longer screwdriver. And I'm hoping that it will work, and it will. Awesome. All right, is this magnetized? It is, excellent. Okay, let's see if it'll hold in. It does hold. It's gonna get in here. struggle to get in there next time I need to go. Um, so what we did learn is that there is a lot of space um, from this power supply to the uh, side of this case. Uh, you could argue that you know we can't go to the actual case of the power supply because these cables do come out of it. So let's just do a little dry fitting of these cables just to see how much clearance we actually have. Now if I bend these out of the way, uh, we still have roughly, I'm actually gonna be measuring from uh, the inside of this lip over here instead of the actual uh, flush of the surface, so my estimation is going to be actually more generous than reality. So right now, if I bend these cables out of the way, we are looking at roughly 40 millimeters of clearance uh, from the side of the case to that cable, and that is very reassuring considering that the TX240 um, along with maybe even a 50 millimeter fan is not going to exceed 40 if my math is right. It's around 20, 20 something millimeters for the radiator and then 15 for the fan so that's roughly around uh, 35-ish. I know the um, measurement for the rad isn't that accurate but Again, that was 40 millimeters from this cable to this lip. Uh, but essentially, when we do install the radiator on the side panel, it's actually going to be um, another extra, from the looks of it, maybe eight to 10, eight millimeters more. So we're looking at actually 48. So we're gonna have another roughly ish um, millimeters of clearance between the radiator fan combo and the uh, cables that we have here. And so things are looking pretty good on that end. I'm actually going to uh, install the video card too just to see how much clearance we have when the water block is also installed. Okay. Yeah, there is so much space in here compared to the other case that I had. That was a, a battle to get anything inside that case. 
here is a cake lock. So that's why some would argue that this isn't real SF PC because it is so big. Alright, so we have the video card in here, and um, already from the PCB of the video card, we're seeing another, uh, we're seeing roughly 60, or sorry, 55 millimeters of actual space, but we do know that this protrudes, this, uh, the water block will protrude a certain amount, um, but I'm not actually overly concerned about it because it's going to be so low here, and this will clear the side panels. I mean, these are just rotary fittings, so they'll clear the side panel. Uh, and if I keep, I mean, obviously I can't move the video card up or down, and a radiator. I mean, if the, in the it's going to be about this high, and so we can just put the radiator right about here. And that's gonna work out just fine. Cool. So, so far, we know we can put a radiator on the side here, so that's super promising. Now, the big mystery is whether or not a radiator will fit up top. Um, if you look here, uh, you'll see that the power supply actually has a fair amount of space in between the top of the panel and the top of the power supply. It's roughly around, not the most accurate cell angle, it's uh, oh, it's really off. Let's see, I can just use this as a gauge and put my finger there and measure that and we are seeing roughly 30. So. Uh, the way it is right now, uh, the 20 odd millimeter thick radiator and a 15 millimeter case fan will actually not fit in here. Um, but that's not overly concerning considering um, I could technically move the power supply so that it is situated the same way that you will often see in other small form factor cases. Let me actually just take it out right now to illustrate that. So I'm gonna unscrew this power supply. All the screws. So let me try to illustrate what I mean by taking off this adapter. So, what I was trying to say is that in, in most small form factor cases, I'll just get this screwed out of here, uh, you'll actually see the power supply oriented, not in this situation, but more likely either this way or that way. And so if you look, down and see if I can hold it with my hand or something. Okay. So, 
if our power supply is installed in this manner here, we then free up all this space from the side to the back of the case. And more than likely, it won't be enough space to actually fit a radiator in there. Actually, let me see if I can do a quick measurement of how deep it is. And I can bend some of those tabs out of the way to give it a better understanding of how much space we have. But Okay, what we're looking at is less than 100 uh, millimeters. So that's not wider than the radiator, but if you install the fan lower, so if we give ourselves more space, more than 35 millimeters, we can then slide the radiator in. Uh, uh, a part of it might be overhanged by the power supply, but that shouldn't be too much of a concern considering we're going to be having uh, 240 in the top, uh, 240 on the side, and if I 3D print some feet here to elevate this bottom part, we could also then put in another 240 in the bottom. So that's looking pretty promising. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else to cover during this quick little breakdown. Um, and then in terms of the fan situation, uh, I'd probably design it so that it's more in a way of a positive pressure case. So intake top radiator, intake side, and probably intake bottom as well and just have this uh, two, 120 millimeter fan in the back. Do the, I'll do all the exhausting. Uh, the fans being used for the radiators are going to be thin, 15 millimeter variants, probably Noctua or Scythe, and we'll probably install a um, a full on 25 mil or even a 38 in the back. I mean, with this cooler over here, there's no space for a 38, or even a 20, oh, 25 should fit in there. Um, and that way, it'll do all the exhausting for us. And we could also then utilize this 120 millimeter side fan too. But all in all, uh, for modding, this case has tons of promise.